Hi, I'm Dave Forty. Uh, I've made this model of the Arc Royal, an aircraft carrier of 1976. It's 172nd scale. And now I'm going to take you for a little walk around the vessel, show you some of the uh, points of interest, some of the working parts, and discuss how we uh, made, made the model. One of the key things with any model um, is to get that sort of element of authenticity. Uh, models can look very sterile and super clean. So with the Ark, we've added an awful lot of weathered rust, just as you find on the real ship. So for instance, around, around the anchor, and by the way, the anchors do go up and down, there's little motors inside. So we've got the weathering. Um, also where raindrops catch and water catches, you have these little streaks of rust. Um, the rust is actually real rust. Uh, we have a bag of nails. We soak it in salt water, crunch it all up into a rust powder, and then paint, paint the rust on. It's taken 25 years to complete. Started from the builder's plans uh, using uh, wood. She's got an oak keel, um, plywood frames, and then a red cedar planking. And over the years, we've built her up now to be finally finished today. She is fully radio control. Uh, she has four motors. Um, eight ballast pumps to trim her down in the water, and uh, various um, mechanical um, effects. So you've got the aircraft's propellers turn, the rotors and helicopters, the radars, the lift, aircraft lift operates, and the jet blast deflectors operate as well. So it's as realistic as I can possibly make it. Now, as we go through, the Ark, she was a strike carrier of the 70s. She carried a number of different types of aircraft. Um, some of my favourite here is the Sea King. This is a Sea King Mark II, and these are Sea Kings I used to work on uh, a few years later. Now with this one, we've got two little motors, one for the tail rotor, one inside running the tail head, but we've got a fault with the aircraft. We've got the electronics bay open and the doors, and that's a scenario I used to be an electrician, and I used to frequently be the person that's inside the nose there trying to repair it. And up forward here, we've got two Mark 46 torpedoes ready to be loaded on. It's thousands upon thousands of hours. Cost, most of it is hand-built from scratch bits of wood and bits of things. The kits are bought, um, but in total, it's insured for around about £10,000. But um, cost really is impossible to save. We used to hang over. Yeah, as, as, the lift, off, yeah? as the lift came up, there's a little, there's like a little cusp there where the water used to yeah. go and you just put your foot in it and the water would go down onto the guys in the hangar <laughs> below. I used to enjoy doing that, that was fun. <laughs> As we discussed the weathering, you have scorch marks on the flight deck. This here is the forward catapult, and here you see where the two scorch marks for the Buccaneers and the Phantoms from the Spey engines. Um, again, replicated on, on the deck. Um, here you have some of the different patchworks of paint. On, on an aircraft carrier, the guys are constantly maintaining the aircraft, the deck, the deck gets a real hammering from heat, from tyres, from weather. So they've always been painted and they're all quite a, quite a patchwork. And again, you can see scorch marks here on the back of the jet uh, blast deflectors on the back of that aircraft. She's fully radio controlled. She operates on a, on a operator on water. But because she's so big, it's impractical to have lots of lead weight uh, to ballast her. So we have pumps. Inside there are eight tanks. Uh, with these switches here, we can pump water and trim the vessel down so she sits correctly on the water. When I was a little boy, um, I lived in a little fishing village called Kingsand, and it's just on the border with Plymouth and Devonport Naval Dockyard. And from a very early age, we see warships coming and going and anchoring in the bay. Uh, and the Ark Royal, at that time, she, she was based at Devonport, and it was a big event when the Ark came and went. Um, a lot of families involved. Uh, my primary school, you'd have the morning off school to watch her sail and things. So over the years, the art was of a great interest to me. Um, I started making models, little airfix kits, and then over the years, sort of made bigger models, and ultimately, the art world stuck with me in my mind, and this is what we ended up with. So she's very strong, very durable. She's also very heavy. She weighs around about 90 kilos. So it's a real strain to lift her. The island itself is all made of uh, plastic strip. Um, 
the radars all turn at the right RPM. They, they were timed and we found little motors deep inside the superstructure which operate the, road, the radars at the correct speed. Um, another favourite part here is the gannet. These are semi-kits, these are made, uh, made from scratch. Again, got little motors inside. But in this particular one, we also have the jet blast deflectors up behind. These operate, go up and down. Um, and she's there on, on, the, on the catapult. The Palooster just started the engine, the crew are around, ready to go. She's preparing to launch. Further back, we have, again, crew wandering around. Um, you have lots of flight deck equipment which all enhances what a model is like. Aircraft, decks of aircraft carriers are very, very busy things. Um, they are meticulously well planned and ordered, but there's so much equipment, you, you have to sort of very carefully operate around it. Hence there's drop tanks, forklift trucks, salvage cranes, towing arms for aircraft, um, fire extinguishers, and even towing arms here. Interestingly, the gannets, did not have nose wheel steering. So when the engine was running, the uh, towing arm was actually attached to the, to the nose and operated by two guys. One had to look backwards to make sure they didn't walk into the propeller, where the other guy walked forwards and then manually steer the aircraft as he went up the flight deck. Very dangerous. It's always very humbling when previous crewmen, uh, be it admirals, bad admirals, captains, cooks, engineers come in, they see the model, and they recognise their home or their old home and, and parts of that ship that they, they used to sort of uh, work with or, or live in. And, and that makes it all worthwhile, really, because you realise, you know, you see, you see the enjoyment from, from this sort of engineering going back to, uh, to, you know, when someone who served on it. Now, coming back to the uh, stern, here are the propellers, bronze propellers. Uh, they, were cast, they were cast for me. So each one goes to a motor. The motors themselves, come from Ford Fiestas. They're little heater blower motors in Ford Fiestas, 50p from a scrapyard, and they drive this thing around all day long on one car battery charge. And uh, right at the back, another little trick I like, it's the gannet. This one is actually not gonna land because the, the deck is fouled. However, she's gonna be a low flyby. But again, we've got a motor inside here as well. So we're using the power, we have a cable inside this rod running up through to up bring her in. And there we go, we can, actually, we can actually take her off, disconnect her. And uh, that's again one of, one of my favourite things, a mate scratch built, and we put a little motor in there and the pilot. All, all, all the aircraft have authentic numbers and serial numbers on, so they all represent actual aircraft that were on the aircraft carrier in the 76 of the runs of the squadrons. If she goes to a museum or, or somewhere, I, I will probably build something else, but it'd be a lot smaller. I would recommend you never, ever build a model this big. It is a complete nightmare to logistically store and move around. The slightest catch of a cuff or problem, you, you end up with a lot of damage. So um, I certainly wouldn't build anything this big again.